The Samsung Galaxy S8 continues to surprise me, both in its good ways and in its bad ways. And as a nine year iPhone user, I was definitely skeptical of purchasing an Android device earlier this year, but I took the plunge with the S8 and here are my thoughts after three months of usage. What's up guys, my name is Brandon and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus after three months of using it. This video is gonna serve as the long awaited follow up to the 72 hours video I made comparing the S8 and the iPhone 7, which got a lot of both negative and positive attention. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out before you watch this one because this is the follow-up but I can just tell you right now a lot has changed so let's go ahead and dive deep and get into the details let's just start with the obvious to get it out of the way as soon as possible this screen on the s8 is incredible I mean best of the year hands down it's not even close at 6.2 inches diagonally there isn't much room left for bezels which is what makes this phone so attractive in the first place the screen to body ratio is a whopping 84% on the s8 and you can compare that to the iPhone 7 plus which has a 68% screen to body ratio due to to the large bezels there on the iPhone. The screen on the S8 uses AMOLED technology with HDR to produce one of the best pictures that you can get on any smartphone on the market right now. You also have the 4K Quad HD Plus resolution with the option to downscale to 1080p or even 720p, which you know is nice if you wanna save battery, but it takes away from the biggest selling point of the S8. The Samsung Galaxy S8 is also IP68 water and dust resistant, so you don't really have to worry about taking it to the pool or the beach or anything like that. Now on the other hand, the iPhone 7 is IP67 rated so you can also take it to the pool or the beach but it just isn't as resistant as the S8 and the IP68 rating. Now I actually tested this in real life. I had both the iPhone 7 Plus and the Samsung Galaxy S8 at the beach when I was actually in the waves and I can tell you that I definitely felt more confident holding the S8 and being on the S8 than I did with the iPhone 7 Plus which may seem obvious but I just really wanted to test it in a real life scenario. Now let's talk about the internals and work our way out. So the Samsung Galaxy S8 is rocking a Snapdragon 835 processor with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage with of course the option to add a micro SD card for more storage. Now this was really weird to get used to because as an iPhone user, as a lifetime iPhone user, you never had the option to save things to a certain folder or a certain card or anything like that. Everything just saved to the internal storage on iOS. So it was a, definitely a little bit weird getting used to that, saving it in different spots on the Samsung Galaxy S8. Now let's go back to that Snapdragon 835 real quick. I just wanna say that this thing is so snappy, especially Especially when speeding up the animations through the developer settings, it is just so lightning fast. And I can't recall any hiccups at all with the S8. And I mean, I use it for everything. I watch videos with it. I play apps. I use VR. I use the Gear VR with it. I do so many things. I haven't noticed any hiccups that really stand out in my mind right now. And speaking of VR, this is just one of the areas where I really like using the S8 over my iPhone because using the Gear VR with the S8 is just awesome. And I may actually make a separate video on that later down the road. But the whole category of VR just doesn't compare to the iPhone since we don't have have an Oculus app or a VR capability built into the iPhone, at least not yet. I'd expect the next iPhone to have VR. Maybe then I can compare it. But as of right now, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is awesome with VR. And again, I can't compare because the iPhone has no VR capabilities right now. Now, one area where I prefer the iPhone and iOS is in a very critical area, and that is applications. Applications on iOS just seem to be so much smoother, just run so much better and more efficiently on iOS than they do on Android. And it's especially noticeable with even some of the most popular applications like Snapchat and Instagram. I thought this may have just been something minor when I first got the phone and something I'd just quickly get used to or fix itself, but it actually didn't. It got worse and more noticeable as time went on. Now, it's not terrible. I don't want to make it seem like everything just runs terribly on Android and Nougat and the S8, but I will say that when you compare it side by side with the iPhone, everything on the iPhone, the applications are just so much more fluid. The memory, you know, how it handles the memory, how it runs things, it's just so much smoother on iOS. Now, the thing that took me the most time to get used to coming from iOS is the complete change of navigation buttons and social media apps. They're at the top and they're much harder to reach than on the bottom like they are on iOS. This is just a very small detail that I noticed and something that's difficult to get used to if you go back and forth on each device. I'll also say that the App Store on iOS, just the whole layout, the whole UX and the UI of the App Store on iOS is just so much better laid out and so much more simplistic and less overwhelming than it is in the Play Store on Android. Another area where the iPhone 7 outshines the Samsung Galaxy S8 is in the speaker department. The solo speaker on the S8 is just so much less intuitive than the dual stereo speaker setup on the iPhone 7. The output volume is close, but definitely louder on the iPhone 7. And that's due to the placement of the speakers because the iPhone has a speaker both on the bottom and a speaker on the front facing, you know, right here near the earpiece. So you won't find yourself covering up the speaker and muffling the sound 
sound like I've done way too many times on the S8 while watching videos or playing games. Overall customization like icon packs and launchers and things like that is definitely where Android blows stock iOS out of the water. I've installed many third party launchers and icon packs and I just love playing around with the new ones just to change the look of my home screen when it starts getting stale. And you know, on iOS, you can unfortunately only change the home screen wallpaper unless you jailbreak or use some kind of third party installer application or something like that. But in stock iOS, you can't do anything like what you could do in stock Android or Nougat or whatever you're using with Android. However, one other critical area where iOS shines is in messaging. iMessage is just a messaging platform that every iOS user loves and most are gonna have a very difficult time. Most may even say it's impossible going to any other platform after using iOS for any substantial amount of time. Now, some of the core reasons I prefer iMessage over Android messaging apps like Evolve SMS, Textra and Chomp SMS are for one, the continuity with my iMac and my MacBook. It's so nice to be able to just have the continuity between my iPhone and my computers if I'm not at one, if I'm at the other. It just makes it so much easier to respond and see messages and things like that with the continuity features with iMessage. Another reason I prefer iMessage is because of the built-in games and applications. You can play games like 8-Ball Pool and things like that. There's just so many games you can play with iMessage. Another reason is the easy audio messages that disappear after a while. So you can just send audio messages, which is really nice, and of course they do disappear. And of course we have the blue chat bubbles. Anybody who has an iPhone knows about the blue chat bubbles. You know, it's a must. You can never text anybody who doesn't have blue chat bubbles if you're on iOS. So there's a few other smaller reasons, but those are some of the big reasons I prefer iMessage. And it's really difficult to understand unless you've used it for any substantial amount of time. The always on display on the lock screen is definitely one of my favorite features on the S8 and Nougat in general. It comes in clutch when you wanna be able to just see the time without having to press a button if you're working or if you're sleeping you just want to look over and see the time without having to reach all the way over pick something up and press a button you can just see it right there thanks to the always on display and i love it and of course you can customize the look of the screen which is just awesome now let's switch gears to the battery life on the s8 so the s8 plus has a 35 milliamp hour battery and the s8 has a 3000 milliamp hour battery and let me just say the battery life on the s8 has been tremendous to say the least this is one of the most surprising benefits of using the s8 over the iphone thus far because i thought my iPhone got great battery life before I got the S8. Now with that being said, the iPhone and iOS do have better battery saving features built in, especially with iOS 11 and the offloading applications feature. So I do wish that we had these features, you know, on the S8, but nonetheless, the battery life on the S8 is definitely better than the 7 Plus, and that is major for me and most people. Now the camera is the same on both the S8 and the S8 Plus. It's a 12 megapixel f1.7 rear facing camera with a 8 megapixel f1.7 front facing camera with autofocus. Now, I did a full comparison of the iPhone 7 Plus and the S8 Plus. So you can check that video out in the cards right now, but in day-to-day -day usage, the S8 and the iPhone 7 are pretty much identical. I use both cameras the same way and I'm pleased with the quality from both, you know, but if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick the iPhone just because it doesn't oversaturate colors. I'm a bigger fan of more neutral and more natural colors and not saturated colors, but that's just gonna completely depend on your taste. So the S8 does dominate the exterior battle in every area except for one, and that's the fingerprint scanner location. Now, let me just say this, the position of the fingerprint scanner on the S8 has really grown on me and I don't hate the position anymore. It just takes some extra work, but it's not as bad as I thought within the first couple weeks I had the phone. Now, with that being said, the natural position for our thumbs or fingers to go to, you know, to scan is on the front home button. So that's where the iPhone 7's home button is. And you know, I just definitely prefer the fingerprint scanner location on the iPhone 7. It just feels so much more natural to me and so much more intuitive and so much more like it's meant to be there instead of being forced on the back of the S8. The iris scanner on the S8 is nice, but I guess it's just never really been my thing. You know, the first couple weeks I liked it, but now I just don't really like having to put my head in a position or look a certain way or to a certain spot to unlock my device. So the main way I'm unlocking lately has been with the fingerprint scanner there on the S8. Again, it's not the greatest placement and I don't hate it anymore, but I just feel like it's so much more natural to use the fingerprint scanner on the iPhone 7 Plus. The pressure sensitive home buttons on both devices are awesome, but of course the button being built into the screen of the S8 gives off a much cleaner look and I just like it so much better than the iPhone 7. However, I will say that I prefer 3D Touch on iOS as it's just a lot more accurate and further along than Android's attempt at 3D Touch. I also like the matte black colorway of the iPhone 7 over the glossy black look of the S8, but of course that's just personal preference. I've always been a major fan of matte colors, but overall I'm satisfied with the S8. I mean, I have my minor complaints with the S8. I also have my minor complaints with the iPhone, but overall I'd say I'm very happy with my purchase and I think the Samsung Galaxy S8 is a tremendous device. Now, of course, I won't be switching from the iPhone and iOS iOS to the S8 and Android, mainly because I have a lot of viewers on my channel, a lot of subscribers who have iPhones, so I can't really do that. But 
if I didn't have this channel, you can make a really good case for switching over to the Android. And I'd even say that the S8 is probably a better buy for some of you out there. It just really depends on what you look for in a phone. What's really important to you in a phone? You know, you just need to figure that out yourself because I can't say that for everybody. But for some of you, the S8 will definitely be a better buy. For others, the iPhone is going to be a better buy. It just completely depends on what you look for in a smartphone. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more videos just like this one. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.